My name is Jonathan Rotz, field agronomist with Pioneer, and today I want to take a quick uh, time to talk with you about field assessing wheat this spring, and actually all small grains this can be used for, so some of our uh, small grain forages or things along that line as well. Um, first off though, I do want to just take a moment and think about what creates yield in wheat. So wheat is a grass similar to, you know, corn that we're maybe more familiar sometimes with. And, and we think about in corn, we always like that primary ear, right? Well, wheat's similar. Wheat has a primary tiller. This is why we plant high populations for high yielding wheat to get as many of those primary tillers. But we also think a lot about fall tillering and fall tillering is great. Um, fall tillering gives us all these secondary tillers, but large, high yielding, heavy weighing heads. But if we would happen to not have enough of either of those to, to be reaching our um, optimum yields, then we look for spring tillers as well. So those spring tillers, a lot of times when we're walking wheat fields and we see those smaller tillers, or smaller heads, excuse me, that are down within the canopy, um, those are the spring tillers. They're a little smaller, they're later flowering as well. But, so, so thinking about this as far as managing high wheat, high yield wheat, we know it starts with a high level of planting population for that maximum yield. Um, this year we've had a really favorable fall and even winter that's allowed us to get a lot of fall tillers. So that's, that's setting our, our yield estimations and ex expectations up a little bit. But then we can also um, bump if we have some questionable or late planted wheat or things like that, uh, bump up with some nitrogen. So as far as wheat goes, when we think about nitrogen, it normally takes uh, between 1.1 1, 1 to 1 1.5 pounds of nitrogen per bushel of wheat. Um, 70 to 75 percent of that nitrogen is actually used later on, uh, feek 6 through 10, which would be about that first node through boot. So this is one of the reasons why we think about, um, you know, doing a split application and trying to move some of that back. Just for another point of clarity on this idea of timing of nitrogen, when we're talking about early timing, we're talking about a first application typically of two applications, where we'd like to have the majority of our nitrogen actually coming later around that Feex 6, which would be just prior to jointing. I always think about this where that wheat field kind of stops looking like just a uh, lawn or, you know, short grass and, and almost starts to look like it's starting to stand up. Put the majority of our nitrogen there later to allow for the optimum uptake during that critical timing of, uh, of nitrogen in the plant, but allowing this spring, out, spring to uh, promote spring tillers as well as get that plant off to a good start. The other thing to really think about in wheat whenever we're talking about nitrogen application and some of the higher rates of nitrogen that we push for our high yielding wheat is to be really careful about overlaps in, uh, in our nitrogen applications. Uh, this is areas where we tend to end up having a lot of lodging then. As well as I always personally kind of like thinking about a growth regulator um, to try to help in that high management wheat. Stream bars obviously are what I prefer to lessen the burn. Um, but especially if you're not doing that, to think also about leaf wetness to try to minimize the amount of dew and things like that on the wheat to try to minimize burn. So again, this year we've had really favorable fall growth and tillering. Um, we've had a warm winter and, and we've seen this green up happen early. So I'm getting questions from guys about what should we do um, as far as early nitrogen. Well, our soil temperatures are still really low. So we're not gonna have a lot of uh, a lot of biological activity on our nitrogen. So, you know, our volatility is gonna be low. Um, we're gonna keep it in the ammonium form. It's gonna hold on to that CEC, things like that. So that's good. Uh, the only other thing though that I would say is a concern of mine is we also have very little plant growth at this point in time. So we're actually not uptaking that nitrogen. And that would be what I would say would be the biggest thing. It would still hold me off into, uh, you know, that mid-March time frame um, when I like to really see pushing some of that nitrogen. But regardless, this is a great time to get out there and start assessing those stands and tillers. Um, and so what we want to do in order to do that is go out, we want to measure off a uh, square foot. So you might have, you know, a hoop, you might have a square uh, PVC, or you can also just measure length of row. So for instance, in a seven and a half inch row, uh, 19 inches will give you a square foot measurement um, as far as plants and such. Uh, there's some other measurements as well that, that you'll see here. Um, what we want to do now is do tiller counts. 
So let's think about what we're counting first. We're gonna count the plants, but we're also gonna count tillers. So as I show you here, you can see this is an individual plant, but we have four tillers. So a lot of times, especially early on when you're starting to learn what all this looks like, I'm gonna wanna go ahead and break apart the plants like I've done here and look at those tillers. Once you get a little bit more familiar with it, uh, you'll be able to do this on your own. What we want to shoot for is about that 27 to 35 plants per square foot, and we'd like to see three to five tillers. This gives us at least 40 heads per square foot that we're shooting for, but our best, our optimum for high yield is that 60 to 80 heads. A rule of thumb is about 1.3 to 1.6 bushels uh, per head per square foot. So if we would end up having a very low plant population, 15 to 18 plants per square foot, that's where we think about maybe rotating to another crop instead of harvesting that wheat field. However, if we're between that 15 to 18 to 27 to 35, that's when that early nitrogen application really comes in to try to maximize that spring tillering to, to get the wheat uh, yields up there a little bit as well. The other thing to think about as you're out here scouting these wheat fields, looking at your tiller counts, make sure you're paying attention to weed pressure and things along those lines as well to, to make a timely uh, herbicide, spring herbicide application if needed. Um, other than that, hopefully you've found this helpful. I hope that you get a, a tremendous amount out of your Pioneer products this spring on your, on your wheat yields. And until next time, thanks a bunch and have a great day. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.